Welcome back to the Code Wolf. Today we've got a short video about the new Blazor features in .NET 9. I just want to jump right into things and kind of run through things quickly. So if you haven't already, just go out there and download the .NET 9 Release Candidate 2, which was recently released. And I'm making this a quicker video because in terms of new Blazor features, this is a little bit smaller release, uh, certainly smaller than what we saw with .NET 8, for example but there are some cool new utilities in here that I just wanna run through. A quick reminder to hit the subscribe and like buttons and let's dive in. So in Visual Studio, let's kinda of go through these features one by one. So I have this small sample app and the first feature is difficult to say, but it's this new renderer info dot name. And this will print out the current render mode for the component that's being rendered. So in this case, I have a global Blazor server app set up, so the interactive server with SignalR, um, and you can see that in the app.razor, so kind of on our main thing here, it's saying interactive server. Uh, but anyways, so this should print out server when we actually render the app. And so if we switch over to our app, you can see that is indeed true, so it says the render mode is server. And so that's just kind of a nice thing to help you uh, be able to either write conditional logic based on the render, based on the render mode, or just check what's going on or debug or whatever you want to do with that. So just kind of a cool utility there. The next feature is an enhancement to the input number form component. So we now have this type equals range attribute that we can add, and you can specify a max and a min value on that as well. And you'll probably want to add some of your own custom styling along with that. But when that gets rendered out in the browser, that's going to look something like this. So we can slide this back and forth to get different values. And if I submit this, we're already debugging. So we'll land in that handler method. And if we mouse over this, uh, you can see that it did indeed bind. So there's a three value there. So if we look at our slider in the browser, we're kind of in the middle on this one to six range. So we have a three there. Uh, obviously, you'll probably want to enhance what this looks like in a real app but I'm just showing you that this does indeed render out as a slider now. So I'm gonna hit continue and let's move on to the next feature, which we can see on our counter page. And normally this uh, starter app, you keep clicking this button and this increments, but I've sort of refactored this to demonstrate a different new feature now. So if we go over to our pages here and into our counter component, uh, you can see I've refactored this to call a get count method which is actually in our code behind file. So I've intentionally split this out into a code behind so that we can look at the new dependency injection feature. So Blazor components now support constructor injection here. So you would just pass in your service into the constructor like usual in C Sharp, and now that works just fine in Blazor. And so we can also put a breakpoint here to test this out. Um, and if we look at our program file, those get registered just like usual. So you would just call builder.services.add, whatever scope you want. I'm using a singleton for your service lifetime. And then you inject the service. Now the counter service itself, it just returns a value of five to kind of demonstrate what's going on here. But if we go back out to our browser and we say, click me, uh, there's our counter service. It's calling the get count method on it. It was injected just fine. So just a standard .NET dependency injection setup that now works with Blazor component constructors. And so when we go back out to the browser, sure enough, there is our number five. Now I'm gonna skip weather for a second. We'll come back to that. But on the grid page, we have this new feature for quick grid. So the overscan property is now exposed on this. So if we go back to our app and in our grid component, you can see I've added the virtualize uh, attribute and now we have this overscan property exposed. And what these two do in combination is essentially as the user scrolls, it only displays the data necessary for what's currently rendered in the browser. And the overscan count adds rows uh, before and after what's displayed in the browser to kind of pad out that scrolling. So in this case, I've set that to three, which is actually the default value, but this is easier to see in practice. So if we go into our browser tools here, uh, this might be a little hard to see, but I'll try and zoom in here. So you can see right now we're displaying, you know, 20 or so rows here. And what's nice about this is that it's only rendering roughly what we can see in the browser. So if we look at our markup in the dev tools, you can see it's rendering down to row 23. And as I scroll through here, notice how that starts adding rows over on the right here. So we're now down to 35. And if I keep scrolling, 
we're now down to 47. But if we scroll up, it's also chopped off everything before 14. So over in our browser viewport over here, it's just rendering what rows are needed to actually display the data the user is interested in. And this greatly saves on performance. So for example, right now it's only rendering about 30 or so rows, whereas if it was just rendering everything and you had a table with hundreds or thousands of rows, that would be a huge performance hit. So virtualize and overscan in combination just show how many additional rows are rendered off screen at the top and bottom of your grid as you're scrolling. So I think that's a cool uh, combination feature. Uh, we have had virtualize up until now, but this overscan property, this is new. This lets you uh, kind of customize that a little bit more. Now, the next feature I want to look at is if we go to this weather page, um, this is actually going to give an error. And I believe this is a bug with the release candidate version right now. Um, as far as I know, this is set up correctly. But I want to show you how, what this is supposed to do. So I'll stop our app. And if we go over to our weather component, I've added this attribute called exclude from interactive routing. And this is actually kind of a cool feature where if your app is globally set up for Blazor interactive server rendering, so if you remember in our app component, we looked at that, the whole app is set at the top level to use Blazor Signal R um, with interactive server, which means that it's dynamically rendering the browser over a web socket and processing things on the back end, if you remember that. But what this attribute does is lets you ex exclude individual components from that. So they'll just render fully server side with Blazor static rendering and they won't use SignalR. So it kind of removes the component from all that fancy WebSocket and SignalR rendering. Now, when I add this right now in this release candidate, I always get a not found page and I haven't figured out how to solve that. So I, I think it's a bug. But if you know of another reason this might be happening, feel free to leave a comment. And I'll test this in a future version. And if it's working, I'll leave a comment in the description or something to let you know what's going on with that. But in general, this attribute is supposed to let you exclude components from uh, the interactive routing. Now, the last feature I wanna show, um, we can actually see by running our app um, through the command line, it's a little bit easier. So I'm gonna open up this command line window here. And so if I just say .NET run, this will launch our app again and give that a second so i'll launch this so there's our app and in dotnet 9 the blazor server signal r uh, circuit or websocket connection better handles when it loses connection how it reestablishes that with the server so for example i'm just going to close this app or actually i'll just close out of here entirely and you can see now we get this nice ui where it gives us a little bit nicer graphic and it's saying rejoining the server but there's some other benefits to this as well um, it uses a more reasonable incremental retry. So at first it retries pretty quickly. You can see it's pinging the server to see if it's there. And eventually it does kind of a gradual back off so that it's not spamming over and over. But this is an improvement over the old experience where it took quite a while and the UI was not great. So if I were to run our app again, so I'll just say .NET run, uh, so .NET run here, and Whoop, misspelled that, it's .NET run again. So that's gonna start up our app again, and you can see it immediately reconnected and our app is still working as expected. So there's just a better experience for handling those disconnects with the Blazor Signal R circuit. Um, and that only applies to that render mode. It doesn't really apply to WebAssembly or static uh, rendering modes. I have tons more content on my channel about all these rendering modes and Blazor in general, so make sure to check those out. Uh, again, I'm kind of assuming you know something about Blazor for this video. These are just .NET 9 new features. So thanks for watching. Just a quick video. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Leave a comment with your thoughts and hit those subscribe and like buttons, and I'll see you next time.